We're going to start off this presentation with the last slide from the presentation on aerobic respiration. When we added up the reactants and the products from the three stages of aerobic respiration, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, and then canceled everything that appeared as a reactant and a, and a product, we got the net equation for aerobic respiration, which was glucose and oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water. What is it that makes this process aerobic? It's the presence of oxygen. Let's remind ourselves how oxygen is involved, is involved in the process. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor for the electron transport chain. And the electron transport chain does not occur without its predecessor, the Krebs cycle. Therefore, both the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain require oxygen. If no oxygen is present, there is no final electron acceptor and the electron transport chain will not function. Since the electron transport chain occurs hand in hand with the Krebs cycle, that won't function either. The effect is that there will be no ATP produced from either of those processes. The only ATP generated will come from glycolysis, which is not oxygen dependent. In order for glycolysis to occur, a few reactants are necessary. ATP is needed for the preparatory stage, and ADP is needed for the energy conserving stage. As long as there is a little bit of ATP in store, it gets used and recycled, so this isn't a problem. NAD plus is also needed for glycolysis to occur. You may remember that NAD plus is regenerated during the electron transport chain when the high energy electron carrier NADH dumps its electrons off onto the chain. But if the electron transport chain is not occurring because no oxygen is present, where does the NAD plus come from? Fermentation occurs in order to generate the NAD plus that is necessary for glycolysis to continue. This slide shows two of the most common types of fermentation, lactic acid and alcoholic fermentation. Note that in both types, NAD plus is regenerated. Lactic acid fermentation is essentially a redox reaction. NADH is oxidized to NAD plus, and pyruvic acid from the Krebs cycle acts as the final electron acceptor and is reduced to lactic acid. During intense exercise, when there is not enough oxygen available to sustain the necessary production of ATP, your muscle cells employ fermentation as a way to generate more ATP, and lactic acid builds up in your muscles. Contrary to popular belief, however, it is not the presence of the lactic acid that causes muscle soreness, but rather a decrease in the pH in the muscle tissues as a result of a different reaction. Alcoholic fermentation is another very common type of fermentation. The final electron acceptor in alcoholic fermentation is acetaldehyde, which is reduced to form ethanol. At the same time, NADH is oxidized to NAD+. Carbon dioxide is also produced. Aside from lactic acid and alcoholic fermentations, there are a host of other less familiar fermentation pathways. Various bacteria and yeast reduce pyruvic acid in a number of ways to form many different end products as they regenerate their supplies of NAD plus in order to continue glycolysis to generate ATP. The various fermentation end products of some different species of bacteria are seen in this diagram. You have performed a number of different metabolic tests in the lab that will help you to identify an organism based on the end products of its metabolic pathway. Hopefully, after this lecture, you'll have a better understanding of what these tests actually mean. The first example of one such metabolic test is the phenyl sugar tube. 
Phenol sugar tubes use the phenol red indicator to determine whether an organism is capable of metabolizing or breaking down a specific sugar. The indicator is yellow at a pH lower than 6.8 and red at a pH higher than 6.8. Some sugars that are commonly used in phenyl sugar tubes are glucose, maltose, and lactose. A negative test result is when the phenyl sugar tube stays red. This indicates that the organism is not producing acidic end products that would cause the indicator to turn yellow. A positive result is when the contents of the tube turn yellow, indicating that the acidic end products are being produced causing the pH in the tube to fall below 6.8. You may notice that the culture tubes contain small inverted glass tubes. These are called durum tubes and are present to catch any gas that may be produced during fermentation. You can see that the acidic end products produced when these bacteria undergo fermentation would cause a positive phenol red test result. Notice that some of the bacteria will also produce gas. The MRVP test helped to clarify positive phenyl sugar tests. In the methyl red test, the methyl red indicator is used. This indicator is red at a pH below 4 and yellow at a pH above 6. A methyl red test is negative when the contents of the tube remain yellow after the addition of the indicator. A methyl red test is positive when the contents of the tube turn red after the addition of the indicator, indicating a very acidic environment that can be caused only by homolactic acid fermentation. In other words, a fermentation pathway that produces only lactic acid. If the organism produces other acids in addition to lactic acid, the pH will not be low enough to cause a positive test result. The diagram on this slide shows one type of bacteria that undergoes homolactic acid fermentation. The vogues proskauer test is done to help clarify a negative methyl red test. Some organisms are incapable of surviving in the presence of acidic end products and must convert these acidic end products into neutral substances. The VP test tests for acetoin, which is also known as acetylmethylcarbonyl. Acetoin is a compound that results from a very specific pathway in the conversion of acidic end products. A VP test is negative when the contents of the tube remain yellow after the addition of the indicator. This indicates that there is no acetoin present. A VP test is positive when a reddish or purplish band develops at the very top of the tube, indicating the ability of an organism to produce acetoin. The diagram on this slide shows one type of bacteria that produces acetoin. The citrate agar slant tests an organism's ability to use citrate as its sole carbon source when there is no glucose to ferment. Citrate, or citric acid, is an intermediate in the Krebs cycle, so an organism that can use citrate is able to perform the Krebs cycle. A citrate test is negative when the agar stays green for a few days after inoculation. An organism that is strictly fermentative will not be able to survive on citrate alone and therefore will produce a negative citrate test. A positive citrate test occurs when the agar turns blue as a result of byproducts from the Krebs cycle changing the color of the media. Although we have not discussed it to this point, it is possible for respiration to occur in the absence of oxygen. This is called anaerobic respiration and it requires a different final electron acceptor. Three of the common ones are the nitrate, sulfate, and carbonate ions. Nitrate, NO3-, gets reduced to nitrite, NO2-, which can be even further reduced to ammonia, NH3, or nitrogen gas, N2. 
Nitrite tubes test for the ability of organisms to use nitrate as a final electron acceptor. Sulfate, SO42-, gets reduced to hydrogen sulfide gas, H2S. SIM tubes test for the ability of organisms to use sulfate as a final electron acceptor. Carbonate, CO32-, gets reduced to methane, CH4. Nitrate tubes are used to determine whether an organism is capable of reducing nitrates during anaerobic respiration. You begin the test with a tube of nitrate broth with an organism growing in it. You add nitrate A and nitrate B to the tube. These reagents detect the presence of nitrites, which come from the reduction of nitrates. Upon the addition of nitrate A and B, there are two possibilities. A pink or red color develops, or no pink or red color develops. If a pink or red color develops, you know nitrite is present, which means that the organism has the ability to reduce nitrate. Therefore, the bacteria is nitrate positive. If no pink or red color develops, a pinch of zinc is then added to the tube. Zinc is a good reducing agent because it is easily oxidized. When the zinc is added, there are again two possibilities. A pink or red color develops, or no pink or red color develops. If a pink or red color develops, you know nitrate, nitrite is present. The zinc reduced the nitrate, meaning the organism was not able to reduce nitrate on its own. Therefore, the bacteria is nitrate negative. If no pink or red color develops, that means nitrite is not present, and the nitrate must have been reduced all the way to ammonia or nitrogen gas by the organism. Therefore, the bacteria is nitrate positive. I want to take a minute to summarize all the information we covered in this presentation. If oxygen is present, aerobic respiration will take place. In aerobic respiration, glucose is converted into pyruvic acid during glycolysis, which then enters the Krebs cycle. Both glycolysis and the Krebs cycle produce high energy electron carriers that dump electrons onto the electron transport chain. The movement of electrons down the chain provides energy to produce a great deal of ATP. Keep in mind that a small amount of ATP is generated by the Krebs cycle and glycolysis as well. If no oxygen is present, however, it is generally not possible for an organism to use the electron transport chain to make ATP unless the organism can use a final, an alternative final electron acceptor. If not, however, the organism must undergo fermentation. During the process of fermentation, glucose is converted into pyruvic acid during glycolysis, which is the only ATP producing process. Remember that fermentation itself does not produce any ATP. However, in order for glycolysis to continue, the NADH made in glycolysis must be oxidized to NAD plus in the process of fermentation. Once again, remember that fermentation itself does not generate ATP. Rather, it allows for the oxidation of NADH to NAD+, so that glycolysis can continue to produce ATP. Thanks for tuning in to the Metabolism 3 lecture. Hope you enjoyed it. Only one more to go.